<laughs> so now I get to introduce our guest speaker. Reverend Rosie Potestillo is a certified interface spiritual director, and she had a chaplaincy institute training in Berkeley. She comes to the interfaith tradition from a rich and diverse background that includes progressive Christianity, Buddhism, and Taoism, as well as she is a longtime student of metaphysics. As a spiritual director, she accompanies those seeking guidance on their spiritual journey. Take me to your leader. <laughs> Rosie is also a commissioned minister for spiritual direction with the United Church of Christ in Chico, where she currently serves. Rosie maintains a personal practice with an office in Durham, as well as leading workshops and classes for churches and organizations such as the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. And many of you are familiar with the classes she has taught for Ali, 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 Ali Oxen for you, Ali. And I'm so grateful that she gets to be here today. And today I get to be here to listen to. So please help me warmly welcome Reverend Rosie. Which of these cups is mine? Well, I haven't touched, so pick yours. Okay. Fair enough. Just to make sure they're not different, right? Got it. Well, they usually are, but thank you. Thank you for the invitation to come and be with you today. It is always a joy. So the title of my talk today, if you haven't read it in some of your e-blast stuff, is Pigs in Parable. The Spiritual Lessons of the Three Little Pigs. Now, technically, the story of the three little pigs is not a parable, but parable sounds better. <laughs> technically, the three little pigs is a fable. Now, a fable is a moralistic tale. St strange noise? <laughs> Thank you. It's a moralistic tale that uses animals in the story. And the, the fable of the three little pigs goes back probably about 200 years. And there are probably almost 100 versions of it. I'm going to be using one of the older versions of the tale, not the sanitized Hollywood Disney version that is, you know, only this long. And it says, if you just work hard, everything will be okay. <laughs> it is archetypal, like its cousin, the, the myths of old. And within this archetypal journey, you have the pigs that represent levels of our growth. And you have the wolf, which represents the shadow that we all have, that pursues us, and sometimes it seems to consume us. I would like to say one thing right here is that please be assured that in the commission of this talk, no little piggies were injured. Okay. <laughs> so once upon a time, there were three little pigs and they lived in a peaceful glen with their mother. Life was good. And every night, mother would tell them stories of kings and queens and tales of heroes. And she would always conclude with a warning tale about the big bad wolf who lived in the nearby forest and who liked to eat little pigs. Well, one day, mother pig realized that it was time to send her pigs out and for them to make their own way in the world. And so, with a tear in her eye, she bid them goodbye. Now, the first little pig, he skipped gaily down the road, and he met a man who had a load of straw. And he asked the man if he could have straw to build his house. The man gave him as much as he needed, and he quickly built the straw house and immediately went out into the sunshine to dance and play, which was where the wolf saw him. And upon seeing the wolf, the, the little pig ran into his house, closed the door, shaking. Well, the wolf strolls up to the door, knocks on the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. The pig replies, oh, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And the wolf says, well, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. 
Well, which he does. He takes a deep breath and easily blows down this straw house and eats the little pig. Now, I did give you a warning here. So, now we have pig number two. Pig number two, when he left home, he was bound and determined to do just everything just right, just as his mother had always told him to do. And on the road, he met a man with a load of sticks. And he said, Mr. Man, may I please have sticks <clears throat> to build my house? And the man gave him as many sticks as he needed, and he built his house. It took him a little longer than the house of straw, but soon he was outside playing and dancing in the sunshine, which was where the wolf saw him. And the wolf's feeling very confident now, and the little pig runs into the house, closes and locks the door. Pig, very, very frightened here. So the, way, the wolf, sorry about that, the wolf comes to the door, knocks on the door. He's a very polite wolf. I, I, I understand that. And says, little pig, little pig, let me come in. Oh, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Well, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And he takes a couple of deep huffs and buffs and deep breath and he blows over that house of sticks and he eats the little pig. Now our third little pig, he's very sad at leaving home. And on the road he meets a man with a load of bricks. And he asks the man, he says, Mr. Man, may I please have bricks to build my house? And the man gives him as many bricks as he needs. And this is a true labor for the pig, because pigs have never built from brick before. And it takes him a while. Thank you. I love it when people appreciate my humor. <laughs> so it takes him a long time to build this house, and finally he's done. And when he is done, he goes outside and starts to plant his garden, which is where the wolf sees him. And upon seeing the wolf, the little pig runs in the house and bars the door. So the wolf is feeling very confident now, strolls up to the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Oh, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Well, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And he huffs and he puffs and he takes big breaths and he tries to blow the house down. No matter how big a breath he takes, no matter how much he blows, he cannot blow that house down. And so off he goes to think and to plot. So at this point, what do we have here? We have the first pig that with his house of straw, he had no boundaries to protect himself. And the second pig, he was trying to do everything just right, but really he was doing everything in the same way. If you look at the progression between building of straw and building of sticks, it's pretty much the same. So doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. It's like the individual that leaves an abusive relationship and creates another one, or leaves a job that disempowers them and walks right back into another one. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Well, now we get to our third pig. Our third pig has made an exponential jump in consciousness when he builds of bricks. And the house has withstood the wolf and it has given him safety. He is safe in his house. But now there is a problem. He's safe, but he is a prisoner. Okay. So back to our story. The wolf, having had time to think and to plot, comes up with a plan. So he goes back to the little pig's door, knocks on the door, says, little pig, I know where there are some delicious turnips that we can go and pick for our supper. The little pig says, well, where are they? The wolf says, well, they are in Farmer Brown's garden. You know, I always wonder why they, 
they get to go pick these things that don't belong to them. But oh, that's, that's, we're not going there, forget that. So the pig says, well, what time would you like to go? And the wolf says, oh, eight o'clock. So they agree. So the next morning at seven o'clock, an hour early, the pig gets up and he scurries over to Farmer Brown's garden, picks his turnips and scurries home and is cooking them for his dinner when the, wit, when the wolf knocks on the door. And the wolf says, well, pig, are you ready to go? And the pig says, ha, fooled you. I already went, I'm back, and I'm cooking my turnips. Well, the wolf is not happy about that, but he goes off to think and to plot some more. And he comes up with another plan. He comes back to the pig's door, knocks on the door, says, little pig, I know where there are some delicious apples that we can go and pick. Oh, well, where are they? The pig says. Wolf says, they are in Farmer Smith's orchard. Well, what time would you like to go? Says the pig. Three o'clock, said the wolf. So at two o'clock, one hour early, the pig scurries out the door, runs to Farmer Smith's orchard, climbs up in the tree. Well, the wolf is not stupid. He fell for that the first time. But he shows up and he sits down at the base of the tree. Well, the little pig, this is the first time he has faced this wolf face to face. And he's very frightened. But he is inspired to have courage. He's been learning well from this wolf. And so he picks an apple that is big and juicy and lovely. And he says, oh, Mr. Wolf, these apples are so good. I will throw one down for you. And so with all his might, he casts the apple down a little hill. And as it rolls, the wolf chases it. And it gives the pig just enough time to scurry down from the tree and into the safety of his house. The wolf is not at all happy with this and comes up with another plan. So he goes back to the pig's house and he says, after he knocks on the door, of course, little pig, we have become such good friends. Why don't you and I go to the fair that is in the next town and enjoy the day together? And little pig says, well, that sounds pretty good. What time would you like to go? And the wolf says, nine o'clock. So at Eight o'clock, the pig goes out the door and he goes to the next town to enjoy the fair. Well, the wolf had no intention of going to the fair and he simply hangs out in front of little pig's house waiting for him. The pig has an absolutely lovely time at the fair. And at the end of the day, he comes back and he has purchased a butter churn. Now in the time period that that this fable was written, uh, a butter churn used, of course, to, you put raw milk into it, you get butter out. It's a big wooden cask, good sized wooden cask with a paddle in it. So the pig is coming home with his prize and he gets to the little hill overlooking his house and there is the wolf leaning against the tree in front of his door and he does not know what to do. He does not know what to do. But he does something different. He climbs into this wooden cask of this butter churn and rolls it down the hill. And it startles the wolf and the wolf jumps back and it rolls to the front of his door and he's able to get into his house and be safe again. Well, the wolf is not happy about that and he's walking around the house looking for entrance. The little pig, in the interim, he starts a big pot of water and vegetables on the hearth. The wolf has now decided, well, there, there's got to be somewhere into this house. So he climbs up onto the roof and he sees the chimney. And he gets on top of the chimney and he says, someone is going to be eaten today. Of which point he casts himself down the chimney. 
while he falls into the pot of water and vegetables. And upon hearing the big splash, the pig sees what has happened and puts the lid on the pot, <laughs> latches the lid, and that evening the pig consumes the wolf. So what have we got here? We have got the turnip patch. And the wolf has invited the pig to step out of his safety into life, of which the pig does very temporarily, steps out. The wolf is pursuing him, constantly pursuing him. In the apple tree, it is the first time that he has had to face his shadow, face to face. But he's learning well. The wolf has taught him well to use his courage, to use his cunning. And he is saved again. And then he steps out of his house and goes to the fair, which is life, life in its fullest. And he enjoys the day because of what he's been learning. And he comes home with his prize. And one last final battle between the pig and the wolf. And in order to win it, he has to release. He has to let go. He has to sacrifice. He has to climb into that wooden cask, cast himself down the hill. There is no guarantee. Thy will, not mine. There is no guarantee he will be safe, but he is safe once more. And he consumes the wolf. And all of the learning, all of the courage that has been pursuing him and pushing him and prodding him to leave the safety of his house, to go out into the world, into the light, this is now all of his. This is not a battle. This is a journey for truth and to facing our shadows. Because we all have shadows. They come again and again and again in life. I remember thinking when I was about eight or 10 that when I just, you know, kind of was maybe the age of, oh, I don't know, 21, 22, I would have life all figured out and it would be easy peasy after then. Well, now that I'm slightly older, than that. I know that life is always lessons. One lesson after another. Some big, some small. And how do we come through those lessons? How do we look that shadow in the eye and have the courage to do battle, to consume the lesson that is there in front of us and pursuing us? How do we find the courage? Well, here's the invitation. When you find yourself in that dark time, look for a thread of light. A thread. That's all you need. Look for a thread of light and grab a hold of it. And this thread of light can be anything. It can be a friend, a mentor, a spiritual director. Yeah, that's me. It can be a pastor. It can be a scriptural book. It can be a walk in the park. It can be anything. But grab a hold of that thread of light. And all you need, all you need after grabbing that thread is where to take your next step. That's all it has to show you. Because after all, we can't get from mom's house to consuming the wolf in one big jump. We have to go through it. Warren was the one who turned me on to the phrase, the way out is through. And I have used that so many times. Thank you very much. The pig has to go through the lessons. He has to go through the darkness. He has to confront the shadow. We have to go through it. 
And one of the ways we get through it is grabbing a hold of that thread of light. And it invites us, the wolf invites us, the shadow invites us to step out of the safety of our house to have a hold of that thread of light, to step out into life and into joy. And so it is. Namaste. Thank you, Reverend Rosie. Ah.